Oh, this was supposed to be my reveal. Well, now you all know that I have a wild and irrational crush on Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> um, but before we get to my um, uh, mild obsession with American history, I, I want to say this is actually my first summit um, as a staff member. And I'm really, this is the first time that I'm seeing a lot of the fellowship projects, and um, which is really exciting, not least because they're awesome tools, but because my experience with the work that the fellows have been doing has been watching their process on the day-to-day, -day, and it has been extremely frustrating. There were tears, um, uh, but that process was really the work. Um, the tools are kind of the fruits of those la that labor, but the change that we're making at Code for America is really um, over the course of the year. So I just want to acknowledge that the fellows did amazing work behind the scenes to make all of this stuff happen. Um, and in many of the tools that they showed you, there was uh, an allusion to how these actually engage citizens. And we want to get a little bit more explicit about that kind of work. Um, so these guys are going to help me make more concrete this, um, this notion that we are actually building trust and participation. Um, but first, I want to talk about, um, if you will indulge my obsession with American history, um, talk a little bit, take us back 200 years or so, um, to the America that de Tocqueville encountered when he uh, came to the U.S. and wrote Democracy in America. Um, he... Uh, this is actually true. This is actually Abi Namani's favorite book. It should come as no surprise because um, de Tocqueville really outlines the Code for America vision 200 years before Gov 2.0 was invented. And in many ways, de Tocqueville was the Tim O'Reilly of his of his day. <laughs> um, and he outlined um, in Democracy in America. Oh, this is an old slide deck. But anyway, he outlined in. Uh, can we go back? There we go. He outlined that um, the fundamental unit of uh, the American system at that time was what he called the township. Um, and the township was where, uh, in his words, the sovereignty of the people resided. Um, and the American system at that time was really a network of these townships. There were places where participation was taken for granted. There was no line between citizens and government. And they were the kind of places where there was no school board but everyone was on it. And um, of course, these weren't perfect places. Uh, it was much more of a, a, a perfect idea in theory than in practice. So for example, I would not have been able to fully participate in this system. Um, but it's what I think of when I think of um, the ethos of uh, American democracy is rooted in that idea of the township that everyone has a voice, everyone is expected to pitch in, and anyone can build something meaningful and productive. And over uh, kind of the intervening 150 years, as Tim and Gavin and Seamus outlined, we've, uh, we've moved to this very, the Industrial Revolution, several pretty uh, important wars, moved us to this place where the political and economic system was uh, so complexified, um, expertise was, uh, became a currency, and citizens lost a lot of their power to actually build, actively build, government, and what we've seen is that government has moved to one corner and citizens have moved to another, and citizens can influence the system in pretty passive ways by voting, uh, marching, writing letters, but they're no longer really actively building government. Um, and you'll probably find it to be no surprise that I think that the internet allows us an opportunity to rebuild that ethos of the township, that we can create a space and new ways for citizens to come out of their corner, for government to come out of its corner, and to build a space in between where, um, where the ethos of that participatory township comes back into, into being. And we've seen a lot of, we've seen examples of how this can work on some of the projects um, that the fellows have shown you to date. Um, at Code for America, we're really invested in uh, building that ethos. And we do this mainly through our brigade program, which has been mentioned a lot. We are active in 31 cities right now and in, <laughs> and in, in three countries, um, and hopefully more very soon. Um, we also have our international program. This, this ethos is actually not just an American ethos. Um, so we have teams uh, around the world who are working um, to build these uh, participatory ways of, of, of uh, citizens building government where they live. And Matthew's going to talk a little bit about his example 
in Jamaica. So um, uh, I'm going to hand it over to these guys to give you some concrete examples. And then we're going to have a conversation about um, where we see these tools really building trust and how we can come back to a place where citizens and government are not us and them, but we're really working together 